Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and today we'll be taking a look at Overwatch's 13th digital comic Masquerade, in which we learn loads of things about Talon as an organisation, its command and members, as we discover more about Akande Ogundimu or Doomfist after his breakout from the Maximum Security Helix facility. We'll be taking a quick look through talking points and interesting bits of the comic, along with a little light speculation on what new Overwatch story and lore we may have learned from it too. Suffice to say this contains massive spoilers, link for comics in the description below if you haven't read it already, or head to comic.playoverwatch.com. Please read it first if you haven't already, then come back and let me know your thoughts. Firstly a quick summary of the story. In a flashback to the Helix Security Secure Facility break-in reported in the Times of Numbani Doomfist teaser, we see Doomfist sprung from prison by Reaper. As Reaper fills in Doomfist on some recent missions and events, Doomfist heads to meet Maximilian, a seemingly omnic member of the Talon Council in Monaco. Learning the state of affairs from Maximilian, Doomfist learns that his position on the council has weakened in his absence, as well as Talon becoming seemingly more concerned with profits above their ideals. As another Talon council member called Viali's men attack, Doomfist and Widowmaker make short work of the assailants. Saying he'll see Maximilian at what appears to be a Talon leadership meeting in Venice, Widow, Sombra and Reaper make short work of what might be rival Talon council members or opponents of Doomfist before Doomfist himself resolves his differences with what may well be Viali. Striding into the council table with Maximilian already sat there, Doomfist says it's time to start a war. What will happen next in the Overwatch world and where will Talon strike? Here's some of the interesting things I enjoyed and observed from the comic and a bit of analysis too. Firstly, we learnt a bit more about the state of Talon's command structure and organisation. Now, if this table seats or anything to be believed, then the council could be around 16 people. At least two seats there are now free, given the activities of Widow, Sombra, Doomvist and Reaper in Venice before this scene, of course. And depending on Reaper's scene, maybe more are dead, or maybe he's just taken out the guards. Now, Talon's council are meeting in Venice on this one occasion, if they're not based there indeed, and we've learnt the names of a couple of other players. There is Viali, who was a major player if it was his idea to try and go after Katia Volskaya, according to Reaper's conversation with Doomfist. We also meet Maximilian. Reaper asks Doomfist if he wants a loan when Doomfist mentioned the name. Is he a banker, financier, a money man of some kind? Maximilian also apparently has history with Doomfist when they meet in Monaco, and we also see him then at the table in Venice. Doomfist says he'll see them there. Now, Maximilian's quite interesting because he's got this very obvious badge in two shots. It's kind of the pie symbol, I think, in lowercase in the Greek alphabet. Is it a different organisation? Is it the bank or something he works for? Or is it just a bit of flair? Interesting point there. As for Talon as an organisation, we learn a bit as to what it's been about over the last few years while Doomfist has been in prison. Apparently the council has taken a different path. Plans had progressed, according to Maximilian, even when Doomfist was out of contact in prison. War between Omnix and humans seems inevitable, thanks in no small part to your friend here. As Maximilian says, Widow's assassination of Takata Mondata was a big deal, perhaps even bigger than we thought in terms of sparking world conflict. We also see that people in Talon were happy to see Doomfist gone, perhaps no surprise given Talon's history of infighting that we've learned about recently. Profit and money flow upon Doomfist's return have been a concern, with Talon sounding as though they're a bit more focused on this money. It's mentioned a few times in different places in the comic rather than the ideology that Doomfist seems very, very close to. It's also notable that people aren't immediately helping Doomfist, including Maximilian. Some are happy to see him back apparently, or will be happy according to Maximilian, but Maximilian's not exactly going out of his way to help Doomfist here either. As for Talon's operatives, well we see that they have a degree of independence or a lack of perhaps oversight from their superiors and the ability to follow their own agendas. Reaper knows that Sombra didn't kill Volskaya or tried to bribe her or got in her way. Yet, although he's been watching her, apparently he's not done anything about this information in Doomfist's absence. Now, Doomfist interestingly didn't want Volskaya dead either, so therefore is quite happy that Sombra is acting this way. I wonder what Widowmaker thinks and if she knows. And speaking of Widowmaker, it's interesting that they all call her Lacroix, not Widowmaker. The next thing that showed up a bit more was Doomfist's ideology. Now, his reason for keeping Volskaya alive fits in line with his bio and origin trailer. He says that she's more useful alive and always has been. She has value, she'll keep the fight going. However, she has been described as being intractable, hard to control or deal with. So maybe Talon have tried to get to Volskaya and didn't, but they decided to kill her instead. 
and Sombra turned out to actually be blackmailing her in infiltration anyway. Now we know that Doomfist is determined to plunge the world into a new conflict that he believes will make humanity stronger. Now is it simply ideology to him? Is that the only reason? It seems as if Talon would want to have some kind of power or place in this new world order and indeed it seems that other Talon council members are a little bit more concerned with the financial side. Is Doomfist a pragmatist? Is he somewhere in between? Or are his morals in a kind of lawful evil way driving him forward? He also says he doesn't mind a little ambition in his people, and it says his people when he's talking about Sombra's blackmail of Volskaya. He also specifically asks after Morrison and Amari when Reaper says that he's been working through part of the Overwatch list. He knows that they're still alive, and he actually questions Reaper for being sentimental. Doomfist questions Reaper almost for being weak, and Reaper takes it. Interesting stuff there. Finally, we see a bit when he talks to what I'm guessing might be Viali at the Masquerade in Venice. He says that profit is not our concern, you know better. We aren't criminals satisfied by wealth and power, we know better. Which is that very moral line for Doomfist, or his own moral code anyway. We do see a bit of Doomfist in action with his sort of politicking side as well. He meets Maximilian, an Omnic, and I think it's interesting that we have an evil Omnic on the Council of Talon, showing that Omnics as well as humans can take their own moral paths in this world. He addresses him by first name. Maximilian has history and sympathy for Doomfist. I think he's very pragmatic as well. I think if you get onto the Council of Talon, you are not going to be making too many bold political moves in some ways and protecting your own interests. Maximilian is surprised that Doomfist hasn't met a quote accident in prison and does take the time to actually let Doomfist know that he's almost been sidelined. Doomfist meets Maximilian as an ally and then proceeds afterwards to sort out the situation in his own way. When Doomfist does meet what may be Viale, Viale says that it's nothing personal and says that his disagreement is purely on the course we are to take, the profits we stand to lose, another mention of this money side of talent. When Doomfist mentions the Wii's, Viale says no Wii and effectively says that Doomfist has been pushed out. Doomfist's activity with Widow, Sombra and Reaper in Venice I guess would have been getting rid of these talent council members who'd oppose him or who would have been causing problems. We knew this already, but a quick look at Doomfist's strength and ability. Him and Widow easily take down the assailants with no rifles, unarmed combat. Doomfist doesn't have the Doomfist at this point, although of course he probably has his augmented arm. And it's a nice touch that Maximilian, I think, rolls snake eyes in the game of craps or dice that they're playing, and loses against Doomfist's role while he's mid-fight in the Monaco Casino. Doomfist also throws Viali, if it is Viali, over the balcony after a handshake in a seemingly very easy manner as well. While we're talking about abilities, we do see a bit of talent on Operations Doomfist style. In the casino, Sombra is posted as a lookout. They're on some kind of comms or microphone. I'm guessing that Reaper would stand out in a casino. However, when they're in Venice and it's the Masquerade Ball, if this is the Carnival of Venice, by the way, this could place the events there, maybe in sort of February-ish. Uh, the Carnival of Venice ends on Shrove Tuesday, which was late February in 2017. Oh, that's a date that's fixed compared to Easter. Widow takes out a Tannen leader seemingly in Masquerade, Sombra turns out the lights with her signature catchphrase, and Reaper does his good old job of eliminating targets. Now how about these for various skins by the way? These all look pretty creepy. I think that maybe the Widowmaker skin and Doomfist skin in the casino, the kind of James Bond kind of vibe could be pretty cool. There's no event right now I think that would suit these because we're expecting summer games, but how about all of these skins for skins in future? Maybe with a Talon themed lore event, I think that'd be really really sweet. After the events in Venice transpire, the question is, what's next? Now, Doomfist takes his seat at the table, as does Reaper, and he just says, we have a war to start. It fits in with his bio again. He has retaken his place in Talon's inner council, and he is ready to spark a war that will consume the world once again. Widowmaker's killing of Mondata, Doomfist's desire to preside Volskaya as someone who will keep the fight going, all seems to be pointing towards pushing a second Omnic crisis or an Omnic human conflict forward again. The question that we don't have answered, apart from Doomfist's moralising, is whether this is just for the strengthening of mankind through conflict, is Talon at its black heart really a lawful evil organisation, or are there other factors at play? I can't wait to find out. What an awesome comic. If I missed anything, I'll come back to it with another video, but that was amazing. Thanks very much for tuning in to this analysis of Overwatch's Masquerade digital comic. If you like this video, please hit that like button below, subscribe, comment with your thoughts and theories, and what Overwatch lore you'd like to see next. I really appreciate hearing what you all think. Now please do check out my latest Planet Overwatch video I made just earlier today before this comic was announced. If you like something a bit more funny, it's linked in here and the description. I really enjoyed making it, I hope you enjoy it too. I've actually analysed all of the Overwatch comics, shorts, lore and more as well as blogs, so if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing about Overwatch's story, check out the playlists here. 
Until next time, I've been Hammy. Take it easy.